I'm already thinking about, well, how much am I going to re-raise him uh, when it gets back to me? Well, it doesn't get back to me yet. The big blind, the pro, and the last guy in the game that I want to get into a hand with makes it really for quite some time now, at least a few years, right? Yeah, in 2018, I started doing it. Basically, it was a case of me just kind of realizing, well, you know, I think I can play poker reasonably well, and I know I can shoot and edit video better than most guys, So, because that's what I do for work. So the two things just kind of were a marriage, I figured, and I assumed that some people would watch, and fortunately, uh, some have. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's great. The video quality is there, and I mean, there's new people that are coming into the space, and, you know, I got this idea to do this sort of newer segment i'm sure you saw the rampage video where everybody's got you know vlogs and stuff going on some people's graphics are are better than others in the way that it works but i think what we're gonna really sort of move towards is doing it with call-in graphics where you, you know if, for example today you and i are going to go back on video we're going to overlay the call-in graphics and um you know we'll go from there i think that that's a good thing now this is going to be really an interesting hand and just an interesting setup as ben was telling me that you know he plays at the pepper mill right of course the place to play in reno and you were saying coming off of covid that pepper mill has actually changed the structures of the games to no small blind so you're playing in a zero five uncapped no limit game is that right yeah, uncapped is really Reno's staple, where uh, I know that uh, the thinking in the L.A. games is the fish just get obliterated if there's if they don't cap these games. But uh, in large part due to the desire of the, the fish, really, the, the guys who drive our games, uh, they don't want to cap on it. And it's never been there and it's always been uncapped. So usually uh, in terms of five dollar blind games, this one plays very deep um, and the elimination of the small blind has been nothing but a good thing in my mind because it's eliminated a lot of these OMCs from constantly saying, you want to chop? You want to chop? Oh, he doesn't chop, but he does. So I chop with him. I don't chop with you. It's always his nightmare. So there's a, there's no more of that. Uh, and it just kind of seems to just speed the game up a little bit. And since the invisible antis are still in full effect, it hasn't really changed the structure at all. So it's been, uh, I think, a good decision on their part, um, as the game continues to, uh, you know, play pretty deep. We talk about invisible antis, of course, that there's no real incentive to enter, you know, a pot when there's no antis in a, in a no limit game, which is usually why <laughs> no limit games are supposed to be played with antis. Now you take away one of the blinds and the real, I mean, <laughs> somebody's opening the 20 or 25 to win five. They're laying like, uh, you know, one to four, one to five. I mean, that really is uh, incredible. All right. So set this hand up here at zero five. How deep are you? Well, I am 2,300 effective. I am um, uh, winning on the day. I, I was in for 1,000, and I think I was just cruising along, right, in this game, uh, really uh, sticking to the game plan, you know, uh, trying to adhere to a, a good bet folding strategy, as you talk about, getting in spots with the guys I want to get in spots with. Everything's going my way, essentially, at this point. And there is a big-time whale on my immediate left, the guy who's driving this game, there's actually two in the game, but this guy's really driving the game. And uh, he's he gives me action on, obviously, any hand that I want uh, with kind of the implicit understanding being that I'm going to not just play aces and kings against him. I'm going to loosen it up a little bit too against him. And I'll joke around with him I'll get, and I'll have fun with him. And this is really the, the, the way it, you should do it. And um, which kind of led me to, of course, my decision to open a speculative hand uh, because the game is playing... <sighs> Just based on game flow, I mean, so many hands are getting played in this game that to just knit it up just seems like such a huge mistake. Uh, so it folds around to me in the hijack, and I have the queen eight of spades. And I was actually trying to think back to a lot of the preflop charts I've, I've looked at over the years in terms of would this be an open or not. And my read of it being right on the borderline, I think, proved to be accurate when I checked. And it looked like it was actually not supposed to be an open in the hijack, but in the cutoff it was, is what I do remember seeing. But I think given the fact that I have this... This big whale behind me is going to call me with anything. I think it steers it in the direction of being an open. So either way, that is what I decided to do. And we're talking about invisible annies. I make it 5x. I just make it 25. And he doesn't even think about it, and he calls. And then the big blind, who is a pro, one of these grinder types, um, calls as well. So that was a bit of a concern. So, so, so just to, I mean, just to play devil's advocate, if he's always going to call 
with a bunch of hands and you're going to be out of position, wouldn't that want to make you play better hands? What's interesting about queen eight is, is that when you change this up and you look at a tournament chart, right, with antes, it's definitely an open. So sort of my feeling here is that without a small blind and it's not supposed to be an open, again, I, I would sort of revert back to there's less out there. So whether or not you can play this hand profitably from this position, I just think in terms of the theory of it, and you know that sometimes I'll definitely break theory in live poker, um, that you would actually tighten up in a spot like this with less dead money out there. Yeah, uh, and you could certainly argue that. Um, and for a variety of reasons, I guess that would have been the play here. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but so two people call in your three ways. So it looks like the pot's 75 bucks, right? With queen eight of spades yep. and a high jack. Okay. And we're three ways to a, a flop of nine, 10 jack with two hearts. Nine, 10 jack with two hearts. So you flop the second straight here. Seven, eight being the first one, king, queen being the nuts, and you have queen eight, right? Yeah, the book ended straight. Okay. Um, and we talk about 75 in, I'm first, or I'm second to act, rather, the big blind checks. Mm -hmm. And I basically overbet this pot right out of the gate. I bet 100 uh, into 75, mm -hmm. knowing that this flop has most likely hit these guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I figure I'm just going to try to get a bunch of money in right now. Uh, the cutoff, who, as I mentioned, a VIP whale loose guy, he immediately raises to 300. Okay. And before okay. anything else happens, I'm... I'm already thinking about, well, how much am I going to re-raise him uh, when it gets back to me? Well, it doesn't get back to me yet. The big blind, the pro, and the last guy in the game that I want to get into a hand with makes it 800. So, so you bet 100, raise to 300, check raise 3 bet to 800 from the big blind. 23 to 2400 effective, these guys, that's, you know, they have you covered or that's the effective stack, I'm assuming. So what's, it's interesting because like you're 450 big blinds of tea, but I always kind of give a giggle because obviously like the large open size is sort of inflates this pot up quite a bit. Just one thing too about the uh, flop C bet. Um, this is where, again, I'll, I'll point out over and over again that from a theoretical standpoint, I think the newer school thought that is if you're t opening from a tight configuration, like if you were under the gun, that this probably wouldn't be a, a flop that you would actually bet with pretty much anything because it hits the field caller's range so much. But I definitely, definitely advocate deviating from that in smaller stakes games because people are playing off their own hand, not necessarily off the board, and, and you lose a lot of value. So I think in a spot like this, it seems like what you were thinking was, hey, like this is going to hit these guys. I have a really strong hand. I don't block any of the pairs, right? right. <laughs> so let me just bet which I think is 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 fine. I mean, I certainly would bet. I don't usually implement over bet flop sizing all that I don't much, but it's kind of an interesting thing because you guys are really deep, right? And, you know, it sounds like your sort of description of this whale guy who raises to 300 is, is that, you know, it's possible he might just have like a jack or something, right? Or is that possible? Like, um, absolutely, you know, but he could also have two pair, you know, or something like that. Now, when the pro check raise three bets to 800, you know, this is another very, very interesting thing because, you know, an old crush live poker adage is that no one folds after raising post flop. Now, that doesn't necessarily hold true all the time these days, but it does hold true with a lot of recreational players, meaning that if someone's going to raise post flop, they are not going to fold. There's just so many more combinations of, I, I think, even two pair or better here for this guy to raise. Because we don't always know if he's going to raise with a jack. I'm talking about the whale. But with that being said, though, if the pro knows that, and he should if he's a decent player, that, wait a minute, Ben just bet over the size of the pot. This guy raised, right? This $800 bet as a check raise three bet, like this is, I don't think it's ever a bluff. There's really no way... You know, I was looking through the different types of hands. I mean, there there is a way to balance having some semi-bluffs here for him and for you. We'll talk about that in a second. But I think the point being here is this that I just can't... This guy's never folding. Actually, even if it's a semi-bluff, like the semi-bluffs are going to have so much equity. So he's really never folding the big blind, especially when he goes over the top of the whale, right? So, you know, you sort of have a decision to make with these stack sizes. Like you can be like, well, you can almost consider it an all-in. 
Now you do have a couple options. Obviously, you know, I don't think folding is one of them, but calling or, or, or raising back over the top because of the wetness of the board. Right. But sometimes you just look at this situation, like it's, it's an all in, like you made it 800, like, you know, what if I just treat that like basically as an all in, like I bet one into 75, 175, 475, and now he's jamming for like, you know, 2300. It's like, you know, 2775, like, you know, 23, 22, 2300 for, for me to call, which would probably mean you'd need like 45, 46% equity. It's kind of a, it's kind of a shitty little spot because of probably how much King Queen that he could have here. But just like even off the top of my head before I went to Poker Cruncher, I just, I, I don't think that, uh, like I said, I don't think folding is an option because I think the pro could have seven, eight here. I think it's possible that he might have like a set of nine. Some of the semi bluffs, if I was in his spot, you know, a hand with a bunch of equity, queen, 10 of hearts. I mean, I think he would probably three bet off with ace, queen of hearts. But I think now the decision for you though is, is that if you want to continue, I don't know if folding ever was an option for you, but if you want to continue, it was. it was okay. I think it was. Yeah, I, but you have a queen in your hand too. Yeah, it's just hard. I mean, if I had seven eight here, I'd seriously consider folding. Like, I would obviously much much rather have like a set than have seven eight here, um, because you can improve. Right now, you're in a situation here with queen eight where you can imp you cannot improve, but you do beat some other hands. But I think I can get on board with folding seven eight here as like I could get on board with like folding like Jack 10 here or like two pair on the flop. I just think that queen eight, when you block, you know, a queen. And then if you think he's going to squeeze with, you know, king queen suited, you know, that cuts like another, the three combinations out. So now you're left with like nine combos with you having a queen in your hand. So I just, yeah, I, I think it would be, I, I think it's just, I think it's a little bit weak. I, I think I'd probably die with this hand, but now the question is how do you want to play it? right? Like, what do you yeah. think is the best way to play this hand? Is it to fast play now so that no action card cards basically come off? You know, you also have to think what's the best way to extract money from the whale. And then also too, sometimes you actually like, it's a combination of, am I waiting for a card to improve my equity, which is kind of a play out of PLO where the board is so wet, that there are times where like if a heart were to come, like say the queen of hearts came or something like that. I mean, that's an extreme example. You know, my hand just basically goes down to zero. So I could call here, wait for a safe card, have them bet again, and then basically put it in. If you do that, you, you know, yes, you price this other guy in behind you. So those would be the things that I would be thinking about. Well, there, there, there I was thinking about a number of those. First of which was, um, what's the most likely hand, obviously, that the pro has here? I did think that it was likely, more likely than not, that given the game flow, he was going to three bet off pocket nines, pocket tens, and pocket jacks before the flop. Okay, um, even pocket nines. Even pocket nines. Okay. So, okay. yeah. That obviously wasn't a guarantee, mm -hmm. but I figured it was likely. So, it made me think that the two most likely hands, obviously, were king, queen, and seven, eight. And I did think that he would do this with seven, eight, but I thought that there was a chance that he might just flat it. I did think he would probably just flat um, his sets should he have managed to show up at them a decent amount of the time. But I also thought he might do this with his sets a lot too. So uh, I'm factoring in all these things, and I'm also realizing, well, look, this, whatever I do, it just seems like it would be a huge mistake to blow the VIP behind me out of the hand. Obviously, if I'm going to try to win this big pot here... I'd like to keep him around because chances are he's not in very good shape. Yes, he could have a lot of flush draws that have equity against me, but I was willing to risk that. And uh, I was especially prepared to risk that should I get a blank turn card. So my thought was, if I just call this 800, he will probably call the 800 too. And then if I get a blank turn card, then I think I just have to die with the hand. Um, but if the board pairs on the turn, it's going to be very tough for me to have the best hand or at least a lot tougher and if a flush card comes in on the turn, then I'll get a chance to see what he does as well. So it'll give me some options there. So that's ultimately what I decided to do was just to call the 800. And the VIP came along and called the 800 as well. So uh, I mean, there's something all to of a sudden we have 2,400 going in on the flop alone. Yeah, I mean, I think there's something else to be said here too, that uh, just a little bit of nuance that people might not see in, in terms of the properties of your hand is, is that 
it just kind of sucks if the guy just like hangs around basically with a queen, which is an open-ended straight draw. And, you know, somehow you guys chop the pot, like if he's allowed in there, but with your specific hand, of course you block him having a queen, but more importantly, you also have an eight here too, which means that if he does have a queen, it's even less outs for him. There's some less outs for him. So there's a little bit of that. And then you sort of, you know, what, you know, what about hearts? Well, hearts are somewhat visible, Here's the t so I mean I think what you're saying has some validity. I'm not overly concerned about driving this guy out behind me like some people just want to run a race to fast play to get it in basically. But um, I think that the other thing too here on the turn, you know, on the flop is, is if you think about it, if you're playing against another good player, like am I how am I am I balanced here if I three bet? Like obviously I'm never three betting like anything here probably, but king queen or queen eight. So if the pro is good, would he know that? Would he make a crazy fold here? you know, with pocket nines or seven, eight. And my re response to that would be, okay, but that's still fine. You can still three bet king, queen, and queen eight sometimes because what bluffs could you have here? And what I immediately started to think about would be like ace, queen of hearts and queen 10 of hearts, any heart hand that has a, um, you know, queen X in it. And queen, ace, queen of hearts here, even like against king, queen is has like 44% equity against king, queen off, against king, queen off. I mean, it's amazing. Um, and then I'm actually gonna pull this up uh, onto the video here too. Ace, queen of hearts against seven, eight is seven, eight suited, bottom end, 53%. It's actually a favorite, okay? Uh, ace, queen against pocket nines, 60, 40, right? So uh, ace, queen against a range of nines, queen eight and seven, eight is 47%. So when I started to look at this and then I threw in queen 10 suited, queen 10 against nines, nine, eight and eight, seven suited is 50, 50. So when I look at that, I think that's how you could basically kind of balance that. And all, and by, I think I might've said this ace queen suited against nines, queen eight, eight, seven suited and king queen off is 45, 55. So if I had ace queen suited or queen 10 suited, like, and I was in your spot here and blocked king queen against this pro. And I thought that he could have other hands besides king queen, I think a very viable play is to like basically go back over the top because if you can get any type of fold equity with any hand besides king queen, it has to be a profitable play, right? And also too, specifically with queen 10 of hearts, you also have the ability to drive out the whale, which you do want to do now with queen 10 of hearts because you don't want them sticking around with like king three of hearts or just a random dangling queen too, like queen plus a pair him himself because your equity goes down in a multi-way spot. So I don't have a problem with your call, but I, I, that's my response to people that would say, well, you can't three bet because you wouldn't be balanced. I think you could be balanced with these bluffs. So it, it's, it's pretty interesting. So you call the other guy calls. So eight, 16, 24 pots, what? 25 24 75 yeah. 24 75 okay yep and we go to a turn as i talked about at this point i'm hoping uh for a blank turn card but i'm also pretty sure i know what i'm going to do if a heart comes or with if a uh, board pair comes yep instead the yep. six of clubs peels off so okay. it is the complete blank yep mm -hmm. that i was looking for and i continue to have the second nuts mm -hmm. um uh, and the big blind who was first to act that's 1500 Fifteen hundred. Yeah, so you basically putting me all in, right? At this right. point, right? So basically, put you all in, and at, I mean, obviously, at this point, the way that you've played it, you know, whether or not he continues with this kind of sizing and he's overplaying a hand like seven eight or like pocket nines or didn't squeeze like tens or something like that, but again, he could also have some of these hands too. That's what I was sort of coming back to is like if I was in his spot and I ever thought that there was a chance where. I could somehow get you out of the hand. Once in a while, he might have like a queen, 10 of hearts. I mean, ace, queen suited should probably be three bet off in this in this configuration. But as played, now that the blank has come, I think you have to go. I mean, you can't call and <laughs> fold now, right, on the turn. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. what I decided. So I decided, well, that this was one of the cards that I have to go broke with. Um, I, I find myself thinking about like, well, what, what would you hate more mentally? You know, would you hate going broke here more or would you hate throwing this away and then he turns over a set and you would have beaten him. And I decided that I would have hated that one more. Uh, so I decided to go with it. Obviously I make the call. The VIP tanks for literally five minutes mm -hmm. behind, mm -hmm. um, which obviously at this point I'm hoping that he decides to come along because if I'm going to have the pro beat, I might as well double, I might as well triple up. 
Well, basically, well, not necessarily. Not if you have the pro beat and this guy has a flush draw and he comes along. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're, yeah, that's, I mean, you're well, I mean, because I, there's but I still want him to come, though. I still want him to come, even though I'm even though he's got a chance to beat me. I, you know, chances are he's not going to. Well, I mean, if the pot's 2,500 and the guy goes 1,500 and you call, I guess he's getting, so that would be 55, 1,500 for him. I guess it's really close in the sense that he is getting slightly under the price. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Because it would be like 1,500, you know, 5,500 in the pot, basically 1,500 for him to call. Um, but I'm just trying to think of a scenario where this, you could have this other guy beat and then this guy's got a draw that can beat you. And it's not like he's putting in like a crazy amount of money dead. You know what I mean? By the way, too, on that topic, a lot of people might think about this too, because I've talked about this a lot is like, you know, what about your multi-way, multi-handed, multi-way responsibility here? Like, shouldn't this be a tougher spot for you? Shouldn't you lean towards a fold here because it's multi-way? And in theory, yes, that is true. But I, I mean, I think that you and I sort of, talk through what this guy is like the fact that he doesn't back raise on the fly he does he doesn't have you beat right no back raise just calling i'm talking about the whale right so i you know i i think that you know it's just it's not like we're like oh we need to fold the turn because there's a guy behind us no the guy behind us doesn't have us beat right (laughs) right yeah. yeah so he ended up folding he ended up folding after basically five minutes of deliberating on the topic um Uh and I then asked the pro if he wants to run it twice. He says, yes. Uh, and then he says, the last thing I wanted to hear was, we probably have the same hand. Oh, that's, said, oh, that's, that's shit. probably not that's good. Because I, I don't think that he's going to be saying that if he has queen eight. <laughs> no, I don't think so. So uh, he, he obviously ends up having the king queen run it twice. It doesn't matter. The uh, board did pair on one of the rivers, but um, uh, obviously he ended, up, uh, he ended up getting it. After talking to... Uh, another one of the local bros, of which in Reno there are many, mm-hmm. um, he seemed to agree with the fact that this guy flats a set on that flop, um, doesn't three bet it. Which, I mean, in a general sense too. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't even care where you're playing. It's going to be different here than other places, perhaps. But it's just amazing the way that so many, like such a high percentage of flop three bets, are incredibly nutted. I mean, let me incredibly. Let me ask you a question. What? would you have done with pocket jacks i'm assuming you get to the turn the same way right bet bet all now he puts you in what do you do i probably fold against him yeah okay i I mean that was my thought too i think given the fact that obviously as we talked about earlier i block i do block king queen here um and he could still potentially be having some of these sets but um i I think it's more likely that I find a fold with pocket jacks on that blank turn. And then also too, it's an interesting thing for his response. People are like, well, he would flat maybe with nines. Okay. What would he do with seven, eight suited? Now maybe he would flat with that too. And that is another hand where it's like coming from a PLO sort of sense. When you think about this, I don't know how much, if you play any PLO, but it's like one of these spots where like if seven, eight suited gets, if he, if seven, eight suited gets called, like if he puts it in and puts more money and he gets called, he's actually doing quite bad, even if he, he might be technically ahead against a range of hands that calls. You see what I'm saying? Um, because of future equity. So that is actually a really good example of where you might call in his spot with 7-8 and sort of wait to see how the hand reveals itself because there's so many equity changing turn cards, right? You know, the difference between the deuce of clubs and the eight of hearts, right? The eight or the queen of hearts. I mean, talk about, or, or the board pairing, right? So, so what do you so, like the most in terms of a flop play here? Just in, in, if you had to give me an answer, like what, what do you think, uh, what would you have done? Well, if the guy's like a nitty sort of pro who, which he is, it, it's sort of, I mean, I would almost prescribe to it like a little bit of an unbalanced type of situation here where, I feel like I might not want to three bet back with queen eight because I, I might get him to fold out some of these hands that we want him in with, but maybe I would put pressure on him if I had ace queen of hearts or queen 10 of hearts for the same reason, uh, which is, like I said, inherently a little bit unbalanced, but I think you could probably, probably go either way with it. Maybe I sort of lean towards a call and then, like I said, you kind of see on the turn, you know, if the turn breaks out. Also, too, like, you know, it's what it's it's interesting too because if if he check raises to eight hundred like he did, you call, 
and then something crazy happens. Like the guy back raises you all in and then he calls. It's like, uh, now, right. I think you could probably fold 800 that, yeah. call all in all. in. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> because I mean, at that point you're, you're basically drawing almost dead to King queen. I mean, you're drawing to a chop, right? So you don't almost have to think with the amount of King queen combo, someone's going to have it. So that kind of protects yourself from that too. Right? Like, you bet 100, race to 300, 800, call, all in, all in. Now you don't lose your whole stack too, right? As opposed to three betting the flop, no information about that, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I got to tell you though. I mean, when, when I bet 100, <laughs> VIP goes 300, pro goes 800. Yeah. I yeah. really, really wanted full bet hand. <laughs> like yeah. I, I, just at that moment, I was like this, I could just escape right here is what I was thinking to myself because... I mean, I think you continue. It just, it just I think screamed you, the I think... king. It just screamed the king queen was the most likely hand. No, knowing him, I mean, obviously, when people who watch my vlogs know this, uh, you know, the thing that I preach more than anything else is the importance of knowing your opponents. And mm -hmm. Reno or cities like it, you play with the same guys all the time, yeah. so you get to know them really well. So both these guys I know really well, mm -hmm. right? And and that was my thought was oh, I just don't know if he's ever doesn't have king queen here when he makes this eight hundred dollar bet because he's. He's a grinder. He's grinding it out. He's playing for profit. He just doesn't. He doesn't want to get himself in shitty situations. So, I uh, you know I really did want to, but as I talked about earlier, for a variety of reasons, I decided against it, and I guess it ended up burning me. Well, I mean, like I said, like I would, I would fold seven eight for sure. Uh, you know, you probably just bet call with sets. Obviously, king queens the nuts, and then queen eight is sort of this in between land, and then you you know, you know, obviously you continue with your big draws like however you want to play them ace queen of hearts queen ten of hearts you could have queen eight of hearts here too right obviously you're going to continue with that right you have queen ten of spades you could have queen ten of hearts against jack of hearts ten of diamonds nine of hearts so ben sorry for the uh result but definitely an interesting hand again you can check out uh just search on youtube i'll put the link to ben's vlog in the description to this video ben deach and uh thanks for coming on